Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome along to a little bit of a vlog that I want to put together for Chris, who's asked about the cask washer, because he's in the process of building one, or keg washer, something like that. So I might as well start right at the bottom, which is the recirculation pumps. Now I've waxed lyrical about these things many a time in the past. These Clark pumps are about 100, maybe 140 quid these days. Um, and they're really good value and are quite good at dealing with the chemicals that you throw at them, provided they're not acids. Hello, Reg. So, a couple of things to note about these pumps. You can treat them as consumables because they are cheap enough. And if you get in touch with Clark themselves, you can order the only part that seems to deteriorate, which is the impeller. So the impeller is made out of a fiber glass reinforced nylon, and it has in it a brass bushing which screws onto the drive shaft of the pump itself. And when we used paracetic acid in the brewery, it eats into that brass bushing so that's the only thing that is really um, something I pull up on this pump all the rest of them all the rest of the components seem to work absolutely fine so if you get in touch with Clark you can order like 10 of these impellers for I don't know the price of a pump and then instead of having to buy a new pump every time the acid eats away on the impeller you just take the housing off put a new impeller on put the housing back on cost of a tenner Maybe once a year that'll happen. And then you've got uh, another pump for another year. If you're using caustics or just rinse water, that's not going to be a problem at all because the caustics don't touch anything on the inside of this pump. Unless, of course, you're using hypochlorites, which will eat away on the steel, but you don't want to be leaving that sat in your tank anyway, particularly if you've got a heating element in your cask washer because if it's an incloid heating element the hypochlorites will also destroy your heating element and any other stainless steel fittings that you've got in there so just stick to caustic you don't need anything else if you want to give your uh, casks or kegs a hypochlorite rinse then either do it briefly on your cask washer and drain afterwards or just treat the individual casks themselves if of course you wanted to scale up from here you could move on to one of these. So this I believe was from Prestige Pumps. This is an Ibarra CDX uh, HSMA7005. So this particular pump has the hot work seals on it. So it's I bought this as a spare for the brew pump should we need to tra change them over. Let's say we had a breakdown mid brew. I can just take the old pump out and put this pump in and we can continue with the brew with maybe a half an hour interruption in between. If you've got the money and you've got the spends you can use these on your cask washer as well. But personally for the money these are about five times the price of one of these Clark pumps. That's up to you, but that will last a lot longer and need servicing a lot less. So it depends how you want to play it. Anyway, Reggie, let's go downstairs and have a look at the cask wash itself. So I don't want to talk too much about the control panel that I built for this cask washer. That is on a separate video sometime last year and all it does is take away the manual operation of the cask washer so you can turn all of the pumps on and go away and let's say I don't know go and get your dirties from next door is what we usually do and pull the shives and keystones out and yeah that kind of thing so it gives you an opportunity to do another job while the cask wash is doing itself. We generally have things at about between a one and a four minute rinse cycle depending on the amount of soiling but usually we can be sub two minutes for most of them. So the cask washer itself 
this is the very first iteration that I built or at least the chassis is and we're looking to redesign it in the future and it's had many a modification since so it's probably been pulled apart and put back together about five times and each time we've slightly improved how it's designed the next time we do it we're going to extend it to put four tanks on there four pumps on there four obviously control relays so we can have two rinse tanks now it's not really a major thing but when I'm upscaling that's probably what I'll do for the reason when we bring the dirties in from next door if we want to fill them straight away we'd want to rinse them caustic them rinse them acid them and then fill them but at the moment we have to bring them in and we rinse them and caustic them and then they're all sat to one side and then on the fill day we rinse them again to get the caustic out and then acid them so it's a two tier process if you know where I'm coming from so that extra rinse tank would make it a little bit easier that's how Gemma mostly does it sometimes I'll just come in and I'll just use the rinse on its own so I don't have to fill any of the other exterior tanks up and I'll just de-shive de keystone and rinse and then stack the casks to one side and then on filling day we go caustic rinse acid fill but it just depends on personal preference effectively so the tanks are at the moment just header tanks for your loft from B&Q I don't know 40 50 quid a piece and inside those tanks on the caustic let's start on the caustic we've got an immersion heater element with the all important float switch to prevent that coming on that breaks the relay circuit so it can't turn on if there's no water in there then at the bottom there is the pump supply so that goes out there down and into the front of the pump and that one at the bottom that is the drain outlet and the drain outlet comes down here and we pull them to the front where we can isolate them without having to pull the cask washer out and then they all, all the drainage outlets come together with this little manifold of waste pipe and then they shoot to the back and away down the drain proper the pump itself is mounted on a bar so that the center of the outlet is at the center of the tank so we've just plumbed them in with nipples and sockets and threaded nipples that kind of thing to make a watertight seal the holes are literally a fraction of a millimeter perfect there's no gunk or anything around them they're just friction fits we don't have any leaks you can see at the back the pipe might be better if I come around this side a little bit the pipe that's coming out of the caustic tank that copper pipe there I must have just used that bit because I didn't have any plastic at the time that goes into the front of the bell housing on the pump and then out of the top of the pump through into the tank and then obviously the tank comes up we've got this shaft all of this does unscrew then we've got on the top a threaded reducing nipple I've actually welded it on but you know do it however you want and then on the top of there I've got one of these spray balls from Amazon which has a half inch BSP um, internal female thread on it and that ball and these work absolutely perfectly as you can see they spin quite freely on their own never mind when there's that pump kicking out 700 litres per hour or whatever it's rated at might even be more than that and then <clears throat> just with the uh, controller you've got an on and off switch for the timer you've got a manual switch if you want to override that and just run it for as long as you want then also you've got an isolation plunger so when you turn the tank on or we turn the power on 
if there's any time left on the timer it doesn't turn on accidentally and spray in the face but just in case it does we have these um, jerry cans from old batches of chemicals chop the bottom off we'll just sit it on top to prevent any accidents works fine so when that tank is full we just fill it up manually close this valve fill it up manually and dose the tank with the caustic as required simple and then we've got exactly the same thing going on for the acid tank the only difference with the acid tank is at the end of every cycle every use should I say every day we drain this tank down we might leave caustic in for a few days you see until it loses its effectiveness but the acid gets emptied every day and we also spray water down the spray ball to remove any of the acid out of the pump housing meaning we get a little bit longer from those brass brass bushings on those impellers handy no no less so acid tank exactly the same as the caustic tank minus the heating element we don't need to heat up the acid so less complication there uh, I think that's all we need to cover with the acid tank. Acid tank on its own, yeah, that seems fine to me. And then in the centre we've got the rinse tank. So the rinse tank initially was just run off the mains in, but we found if we were doing something else, let's say somebody had flushed the toilet, or we were chilling, or maybe even the building next to us was using a lot of water pulling off the mains, the pressure would drop and you wouldn't necessarily there'd always be a question mark as to whether you was getting a proper rinse on the inside of your casks. So what we've decided to do is fit a booster pump in line, exactly the same style as what we've done with the caustic and acid tank, but that's not being fed from the mains, that's being fed from a header tank, this IBC here, which charges up with a ball valve from the mains, and that comes around here through this large uh, 22mm pipe, and when we hit the button, to start the rinse cycle instead of uh, just turning the pump on it also opens this rotary valve which supplies the water to the pump and spray ball because obviously there's no reservoir for this one what happens is as soon as the water comes out through the through the spray ball into the tank out the bottom of the tank or the, the, the keg, the firkin, whatever, and then it drains away immediately. Down here, it's like a sh we've used a shower tray outlet at the bottom of the tank to get as low a profile as possible so the tank is fully draining. And it's also got this handy little thing in it to catch any little bits of, you know, cork or whatever come out of your firkins. And then this runs down here into our drainage manifold and away. And as you can see, the acid tank and the caustic tank run into there as well. But during use, they're both closed, like so, and both isolated from the rinse tank water. So there's no chance of cross-contamination there. And it's pretty much as simple as that. And then, uh, because I wanted to make things as easy as possible, all of the pumps are plugged into waterproof single sockets on the back so I don't have to rewire the pumps if we need to change any of them we just change the pumps unscrew the fittings screw them into a new pump and then just plug that into the back <coughs> and then all the cables run up to like I said to the control panel and then from the control panel to a 40 amp breaker but we're only running 32 amp single phase into here which is actually more than enough to cope with the three pumps and the 13 amp heating element and then whatever else is in here in terms of relay switching and what have you but just a quick peek in there everything's isolated by this big boy here so when that comes on that's a big contactor which is wired in to uh, um, lock into position when everything's on and then of course we've got secondary breakers and relays for everything else for safety make sure as well that all of your tanks are earthed so 
for instance, we've got a 13 amp heating element coming into water here, and effectively, if that shorted out, you'd have an isolated bath of water at 240 volts. So the earthing point at the back of that connector runs to the chassis of the cask wash and then the chassis and everything else, all the other earth points run into the box where we have a 40 amp RCD and then that runs through the main breaker to our distribution board way over in the corner which also has a 100 amp RCD on there as well but that very rarely trips if it does it turns everything off in the building funnily enough but that's that's secondary protection our main point of protection is our CPC which is the uh, obviously the, the earth wire and then you've got the RCD in there and then uh, then again you've got another a third RCD down at the main unit and uh, CPC is a circuit protection conductor if you're not sure what I'm talking about that's basically your earth wire but that's uh, that's your lifeline should there be any faults so don't snip those earth wires off boys connect them to something it's the best thing to do but there we are quick rundown of our cask washer probably V1.8 or something and I imagine when I've got a couple of pound in the bank and a few days spare we'll be making V2.0 which will be fully stainless steel welded four vessel cask washer now these can wash casks firkins as they're commonly known and kegs we've got the 30 litre kegs and we've got the 100 litre kegs that we got from Martin via well from Morrow Brothers I believe via Martin and of course um, you can as long as you take the spears out that's how we wash them we also have <coughs> a couple of little fancy doodads for washing the spears so here we have a modified Sankey S fitting where both the gas and the product lines are coupled together via a T-junction and at the end of that we have um, this little cam lock fitting and what we tend to do is we'll take a lever valve with a cam lock um, A fitting on there take off the spray ball from the acid tank or whatever you're doing at the time install this and then we'll couple this to our little assembly here and we're able to then, once we've removed the spears we can just connect up a spear to the uh, to the Sankey fitting and we can rinse and wash out both the gas and the product lines through the center of these spears because obviously they're not going onto a, a big fancy cask washing machine and then when that's cleaned we'll sit that in a bucket of water or a bucket of acid actually until the kegs are cleaned and then they'll be put together like that then they'll be taken across to the filling area where they're purged with CO2 and then filled with product. It's worth noting that these new kegs that we bought I've got some footage actually for how bad these were designed but the spears on these new kegs don't come out with your keg removal tool you have to have another one where you have to poke something down the inside to get them out so they're not suitable to be used on a system where you have to take the spears out to fill so I don't recommend buying any kegs from NDL Keg Europe at the moment because they've changed their spear supplier to Micromatic I believe is what these are now I don't think I have one of the other ones available to show you I really don't actually I think they're all full but the other ones when you put your 
uh, either your spear removal tool or your modified coupler because you can make a modified coupler to do it when you press it down the action of pressing your coupler tool down releases the safety latch on the other ones unfortunately with these it's been designed in such a way so that doesn't happen so you have to remove the safety latch if you want to take these in and out on a regular basis simply because you're going to end up aha we've got one here's one of them so Jem can I borrow you we'll get Jem across to demonstrate the action of how this works but what happens is this little tab when I get the removal tool this tab sticks out and it hooks under the edge of of the keg so you can't physically pull it back out but if you just engage that and then when we're ready I'll just show the tab yeah and then if you can press it down see the action of pressing down the uh, coupler pulls that tab in and that's because that tab has this little leg at the bottom near my little finger here which hits this shoulder and as it hits that shoulder that tab rides out that way which then in turn seesaw in a seesaw motion means that secure tab has to pull in whereas if you take that off Gem and just show us with one of these cheap chintzy ones from NDL keg so you can see this is where the security uh, tab used to be which I've now removed so if Gemma connects this together you'll see that as she pushes it down the shoulder is way off this edge here and put them side by side you can clearly see the difference if you want to just disengage it Gem that's it disengaged look so you can still see the difference look how low down that shoulder is Whereas with the with the good ones, the shoulder is captive underneath that fitting there. So what they've done is they've made this too long. And then because they've bulged up, they've come up with a, a second, not quite as good idea of uh, putting in a safety latch. Which you have to breach the inside of the valve to undo it. It's bollocks and bullshit and a very bad design. But if you can get these ones, <clears throat> now these did come from NDL Keg, but they came from them in 2017, so they've obviously had a change of heart since then. But these are the good ones. D1822, does it say that in there as well? Not that I can see. No, you see, look, there's nothing in there. So if you see one like that with the purple O-ring and all these numbers, and you see one with that D1822 in there, go for this one. Go for the one where you can't see the O-ring because hopefully it'll have this really well designed latching system. So there we are. So that concludes our cask wash explanation and tour with a little bit of bonus material on keg spears and cleaning. Right then, come on puppies! Let's go for a walk like pet! Wanna go out Reg? Do you want to go for a walk? You do? Oh, aren't you a lucky boy? What about you, old timer? Yeah, come on then. Stop rattling on. You're an idiot. No one's even listening. I know, mate. I know. Well, we'll maybe make another video in the future. And maybe somebody will listen then. Cheers. <laughs>